The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And hidden in that swell cheese flavor are important nutrients from milk. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, the cheese food of Kraft quality. Well, it's March, and a chill, blustering wind is blowing through the little town of Summerfield. But in the heart of the great Gildersleeve, there is all the warmth and tenderness of spring. Yes, once again, love has come to our chubby friend. Dear diary, tonight I have another date with Adeline. <laughs> what a woman. She's beautiful, charming, intelligent. Well, fairly intelligent. I know I promised you, dear diary, that I wouldn't fall again. But what the heck? I'm only human. Do you want me to tell you a secret? I haven't kissed you yet. But this may be my lucky night. <laughs> I'll let you know when I get back. So keep your fingers crossed, dear diary. Good night. Good evening, Adeline. Why, it's you, Throckmorton. Yeah. <laughs> well, you come right in the house before that wind blows you away. Oh, thank you. Let me have your coat now. I'll hang it right here on the hall tree. All right. Uh, Adeline. Yes, Throckmorton? Here's a little present for you. A present for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, a bottle of perfume. Yeah. Do you like perfume? Like it? Why, well, I could swim in it. Well, just half an ounce. <laughs> oh, and it's called spring madness. Why, you little devil, you. <laughs> you know what I ought to do? I ought to give you a great big thank you kiss. Well. But I won't. Huh? You'd think I was just being forward and bold. No, I wouldn't. Oh, yes, you would now. Well, you just sit down while I put this perfume on my doodad shelf. Almost got that kiss. Well, it's early yet. Uh, what would you like to do tonight, Adeline? We'll do anything you say. It's up to you. Well... We could stay here, sit by the fire, but it's up to you. Well, Nice I... and cozy here, just the two of us. <laughs> but it's up to you. I guess we could stay here already. Well, if you insist. <laughs> Shall we sit here on the sofa and uh, talk? Well, I'd just love to, sir. Uh, uh, well... Here we are. Don't you want to move a little closer? No, I don't. Then I'll move closer to you. <laughs> Adeline. Yes? Would you like to play a little game? Well, that depends. How do you play it? Well, you just sit here and I put my arms around you like this. Yes? Then you close your eyes. Yes, they're closed. None of your Yankee tricks now. <laughs> Now, you say peruse. A uh, per... Now, Throckmorton, I know what you're up to. Oh? What's that? You're just trying to steal a kiss from me, aren't you, Nick? No. I kissing you is the furthest thing from my mind. Well, I declare. Huh? Am I that unattractive? Unattractive? I know Well, I have you know that down in Savannah, men used to cluster around me like bees around a magnolia blossom. But, of course, if I don't appeal to but you... But, Adeline, you do appeal to me. You're lovely. It's too late to try to sweet-talk me now, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. You've revealed your true feelings in the matter. But, Adeline... I guess men are all the same. 
I thought they might be different above the Mason-Dixon line. <clears throat> Guess I never should have written that letter. What letter? To my old beau in Savannah, Cecil Revenor. I told him all about you. You did? Indeed, I did. I told him that the heart he broke was mended, that I'd found my Prince Charming in the form of a public official. Well, just a water commissioner, eh? Of course, then I thought this certain public official cared for me just a teeny-weeny bit. But I do care a teeny-weeny bit. Well! I, I mean, a lot. <laughs> Adeline? Yes? You're always on my mind. Oh, you're just saying that. No, it's true. I think of you all the time. At home, down at the office. Why, I see your face on every water bill. <laughs> that sweet Throckmorton. <laughs> well, maybe I did misjudge you. That's all right. What the heck? I'll forgive you if you'll just give me a little kiss. Well? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it's all right. I know you're different than Cecil. Cecil, sure, that cad. I beg your pardon? The way he treated you, he, might, he must have been a pretty worthless character, all right. Mr. Gildersleeve, I won't have you talking that way about Cecil. Uh huh. After all, he is a southern gentleman. What you said? Now, don't try to twist things around. Cecil may have had his little weaknesses, but he did have elegant manners. Why, I never knew a man who could bow so deep from the waist. Well, I didn't. And you should see that man ride. Why, he looks like he's part of a horse. I'll bet he does. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I won't have you talking about Cecil Ravenall the second behind his back. But Adeline... Gentlemen, don't do that where I come from. But... Sir, I'll thank you to remove your coat from my whole tree. But... Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, southern gentleman. Right, Bertie, I'm coming. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Unc. Good morning, Leroy. Where's your sister? Primping up for school, I guess. You know girls, Unc. Yeah. Did you have a good time at Miss Fairchild's last night? Uh, pass the cream, Leroy. Okay. Gee, you sure got home early last night. Uh, How come they got if home? If you don't mind, young man, I'd rather not discuss the matter. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Love trouble, huh? Leroy, eat your breakfast. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Good morning, Marjorie. Oh, my oatmeal again. Oh, Anki. Yes? Did you have a good time at Miss Fairchild's last night? For heaven's sake, is that all anybody could talk about this morning? Well, pardon me. What's the matter with him? I'm way I'm afraid. I heard that, Leroy. Speak English. What happened to Love's young dream, Anki? Marjorie, there are things a gentleman doesn't discuss. Well, let's just consider the whole episode a closed book. In fact, I'd be just as happy if I never heard the name Miss Fairchild mentioned again. Morning, Miss Gillespie. Morning, Bertie. Did you have a nice time with Miss Fairchild last night? Ye <laughs> gods. Huh? I don't want to hear any more talk about Miss Fairchild. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. All right, then. Please don't mention it again. I won't. You don't have to tell Bertie more than once, because I listen. All right, then. Yes, sir, I listen. When you talk to some folks, it goes in one ear and out the other, but not Bertie. I listen. But Bertie. How do you think? Keep this house running by being a scatterbrain? No, sir. When somebody talks to me, I listen. Of course you do. Nobody has to chew that catty slice with me. Bertie, I didn't say Miss Gilsey, do you know what I do when somebody talks to me? Yes, Bertie, of course. That's right, I listen. Oh, what a morning. Any mail this morning? Yes, sir. It's on your desk. Do you want to go over the water reports now? After we open the mail, Bessie. First things first. Yes, sir. Oh, let's see here. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, there was a telephone call for you. Huh? Who was it? I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> Bessie, let's be a little businesslike around here. Who phoned? Miss Adeline Fairchild. Oh, she did. Her number is Summerfield 4. I know her number, Bessie. And if she calls again, I'm not in. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Miss Fairchild is a thing of the past. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Quite all right. As Kipling said, south is south and north is north and never the twain shall meet. <laughs> What's that? Miss Fairchild and I have different ideas, Bessie. That's all. She wants a man who can bow from the waist. 
Well, <laughs> maybe if you reduce a little. <laughs> she probably called to tell me she's sorry, but it's too late. It's water over the dam. I'm just going to have to forget, Bessie. I'm just going to have to bury myself in my work. Well, it is piled up pretty high. Uh, oh, yes. Well, it's all over and done with. Let's face the new day, Bessie. Let's get on with... Zook. Hello, Miss Fairchild. We were just talking about uh, you. Bessie. Well, what is it, Miss Fairchild? Throckmorton, I just have to have a word with you. Well, I'm rather busy. Can't you spare just one little minute? Well... You great big executive, you. Uh, well, maybe just for a minute. Bessie, you may go out in the other office and um, file the water reports. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, the file's in here. Huh? Well, you'll have to work that problem out for yourself. Let's be on our toes, Bessie. Yes, sir. Now, what is it, Miss Fairchild? Is your water service unsatisfactory? <laughs> What's the matter? My, you act just like a grizzly bear behind that desk. Growl, growl, growl. Adeline, Miss Fairchild, kindly state your business. Throckmorton. Yeah? I'm a fool. Well... Yes, I am now. Having words with you over that no-account Cecil Revenor the second, that hand kisser. But, Adeline, last night you said... I know. I must have been out of my mind comparing him with you, a public official, a head of a water department. Well, water is pretty important. Of course it is. I drink gobs of it. <laughs> I'm just a teeny-weeny bit worried about something. What's that? Well, I got a letter from that silly Cecil this morning, and do you know what he said? What? He said he didn't want any Yankee like you fooling around with his girl. Imagine that, calling me his girl, just because we were engaged for 15 years. Ridiculous. <laughs> Be just like him to come traipsing up here looking for trouble. Come up here? Yes, he's such a hothead. He is? Mr. Gildersleeve, are you very handy with a pistol? Well, I... Huh? <laughs> In case there's a duel or anything. A duel? Well, Cecil's an expert shot, and I wouldn't want you to come out second best. Come out? Oh, my goodness. But look at me, a chattering away here. You probably want to get back to your work. Work? But, Adeline, wait a minute. Now, I won't take any more of your time. I know your head's just chock full of water reports and things. But, Adeline... Don't you worry now, you hear? What? A duel? Hmm. <laughs> For you cooks who are serving Lenten meals, for all of you who are trying to keep the food budget in line, and for you mothers who sometimes have to feed the gang after a basketball game, here's a swell recipe. It's for Velveeta Welsh Rabbit. Easy to make, economical, and licking good. But what's more, Kraft's famous cheese food makes it a fine, nutritious main dish. Here's all you do. In the top of the double boiler, melt one half pound of golden, delicious Velveeta. Then add one-fourth cup of milk, Salt, pepper, a dash of dry mustard, and Worcestershire sauce. Serve that rich golden Welsh rabbit on toast points and listen to the raves. It's a gala dish any day of the week. A smart dish to serve any time of the day or night because Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself. When you're serving the whole gang for a party, you'll want to double the recipe. A pound of smooth-melting Velveeta to a half cup of milk. So buy Velveeta in the two-pound loaf and have plenty for snacks and sandwiches, too, all week. Everybody loves Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And every Velveeta snack, every Velveeta hot dish gives the family important nutrients from milk. So, smart shoppers, head your market list tomorrow with the word Velveeta. Well, the great Gildersleeve is a mighty worried man. He has just one thing on his mind, no matter where he is. At the office? The duel. How do I get into these things? At night, in bed? Am I handy with a gun? Why, I can't even shoot a water pistol. And the following morning, on his way to work? Cecil Revenor the second. Why doesn't he go soak his head in a mint julep? He would be an expert shot. Well, why should I worry? The whole thing is ridiculous. People don't fight duels anymore. 
I don't think. Gildy. Huh? Oh, hello, Judge. What are you talking to yourself for? What's the matter with you? Uh, nothing. Yes, there is, Gildy. There's something on that so-called mind of yours. Horace, I should have my head examined. I'll go along with that. What have you managed to get yourself into this time? Well, you know Adeline Fairchild. Yes, I'm acquainted with the lady. Of course, I haven't been as close to her as you have. <laughs> all right, Judge. If you don't want to listen... Go on, Gildy. I'm all ears. You sure are, you old goat. Anyway, Adeline used to have a boyfriend in Savannah. Cecil Revenor. One of those hot-blooded Southerners. What's the matter? Are you jealous of him, Gildy? No, he's jealous of me. What? Well, he is. He's so jealous, he might come up here and challenge me to a duel. Oh, that's ridiculous, Gildy. You know people don't fight duels nowadays. Yes, I know it, but does Cecil know it? You can't trust a man who bows from the waist. I assure you, Gildy, <laughs> from my long experience in jurisprudence, you have nothing to worry about. Oh? Dueling is absolutely illegal. And if this young firebrand should be rash enough to shoot you, he'd be violating the state code, statute 489, section 7. Oh, that's fine, Judge. I give you my solemn promise I'll prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law. Why, well, I'll fight this thing right up to the Supreme Court. Oh, brother. What's the matter, Gildy? A fine friend you are. My life is in danger, Horace. I thought as my legal advisor, you might tell me what to do. Well, if I were you, I'd make out a will. Oh. <laughs> this may be funny to you, Judge, but you're not in my shoes. Why, any minute this fellow might pop out from behind a tree, bow, and take a shot at me. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, I don't see how I can miss you, Gildy. You make an awful big target. <laughs> Booker. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I'd like to talk to you. I'll be with you in just a minute, as soon as I finish sorting out these Christmas cards. Christmas cards? Uh, these are a few I had left from last year. Would you care to look them over, Mr. Gildersleeve? Peavy, this is only March. Yes, but if you don't mind a suggestion, it might be wise to shop early for them and avoid the holiday rush. Oh, <laughs> I'm in no mood to look at Christmas cards. Well, they're very nice cards. Now, here's one that has a rather touching sentiment. It's called To a Distant Relative at Christmas Time. Peavy! I know we two are separated by miles and miles of land. So I'm shouting, Merry Christmas, I think you're simply grand. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, I thought it was rather nice. No. Now, here's one. Look, that... Peavy, I want to talk to you. Well, go right ahead. Well, uh, Peavy, what would you do if somebody challenged you to a duel? A duel? What for? Well, let's say over a woman. What woman? Well, <laughs> suppose somebody challenged you to a duel over Mrs. Peavy. Mrs. Peavy? Well, I don't think anybody would do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Suppose it was any woman. It, the grocer's wife. Well, I wouldn't try to duel over her. I, I hardly know her. Uh, Peavy! Well, let the grocer fight his own battle. Oh, for heaven's sake. What did he ever do for me? Um, <laughs> Peavy, this has nothing to do with you. I'm the one that might have to fight the duel. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're, you're joking. No, I'm not. And a woman got me into it. Who, the grocer's wife? Oh, <laughs> Fighting a duel might prove rather risky. If I were you, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd get out of it. That's what I want to do, Peavy, but how can I? Well, I'd just start buying my groceries at some other store. Oh, <laughs> Peavy, grocer's wife. He's a big help. Well, why should I get upset about this duel? Silly. The thing for me to do is stop worrying about it. And, uh, Floyd's Barbershop. Hope I can get by without him seeing me. I don't feel like talking to him. Hey, come here. Uh-oh, too late. Come here. I'm in a hurry, Floyd. I want to talk to you. It'll only take a minute. Uh, all right. Come on in. What is it, Floyd? How do you feel, Commissioner? 
Huh? Are you holding up all right? What do you mean? It's all right, Commissioner. I have to pretend with me. The judge told me all about this affair, La Honor. What? You know, the duel. Oh, that. When does it come up? Floyd, I'd rather not talk any more about it. Oh, I get it. Gentlemen, don't talk about them things, huh? The duel is code. Dueler's code. Yeah, I see it in the movies lots of times. The trouble always starts over some dame. Look, Floyd, I... First thing you know, Earl Flynn walks up to some guy, smacks him in the face with his glove, and they exchange calling cards. Floyd, I don't want to... And then it's pistols at dawn. And there they are out in the cow pasture somewhere with their seconds. Now the two guys is pacing off. Eight, nine, ten. They turn and fire. Bang! Yoy! Bang! Floyd! (laughs) Then one of them don't get up. (laughs) She... He just lays there, shot through the gizzard. Dum, tum, ta dum, tum, ta dum, ta dum. Floyd, I'll see you later. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, no, oh, good morning, Bessie. You look pale, Mr. Gildersleeve. Is something wrong? Pale? No, I'm all right, Cecil. <coughs> I mean, Bessie. You seem a little nervous. Nervous? Not at all. Huh? <laughs> well, guess I'll go into my office. Bessie, anybody wants to see me, I'm out. Yes, sir. Keep calm, Gildersleeve. Cecil Revenaugh's not coming up here. Of course not. I'm not worried. (laughs) I wonder how long it takes to get here from Savannah. Might even be here in Summerfield right now. Might just take a peek out the window. Let's see. Nope. Don't see anybody with sideburns. Uh, might as well sit down. Rest for a minute. <sighs> Didn't sleep a wink last night thinking about this thing. <sighs> Pistols at dawn. I can't even get up at eight o'clock. <laughs> fight duels anymore. Besides, it's against the law. State code 480. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Gildersleeve, Bessie. Oh, come in, Bessie. Mr. Gildersleeve. What is it, Bessie? A man was just here to see you. A man? Yes, a real southern gentleman. He bowed from the waist and handed me this calling card. Let me see it. Cecil Revenal, insurance. He wrote something on the other side. Let's see. I'll meet you on the field of honor, you Yankee. Pistols at dawn. <laughs> Goodbye, Unky. Goodbye, Marjorie, my dear. Gee, Unky, I have to fight this duel. Yes, Leroy, it's a matter of honor. Can't you have breakfast before you go, Mr. Gilsey? <laughs> No, Bertie. The duel is at dawn. I'll have breakfast when I come back. Yes, I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Well, goodbye, little family. Goodbye, Unc. Au revoir. Bertie, if anything should happen to me, promise me you'll take care of the children. Yes, sir. You won't forget now. No, sir. You don't have to tell Bertie more than once because I live. Okay, Bertie. When somebody talks to me, you know what I do? Yes, of course, Bertie. That's right. Well, Peavy, I'm going out to fight that duel now. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I'm sorry to see you go. Thank you, Peavy. Always hate to lose a customer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my friend, here's a little Christmas card to cheer up your last moment. What? I thought you might enjoy the sentiment. It's called, To a Friend Who Won't Be With Us for the Holiday. Oh! (laughs) Don't you worry, Peavy. I'll be here when the holidays roll around. Well, no, I didn't say that. (laughs) 
Well, Commish, here we are on the field of honor. Yeah. There's that guy Cecil over there waiting for you. Say, he looks just like old Flynn. Floyd, maybe we could call this duel off for a few days. What? And violate the duelist code? You, Rockmore. Oh, Adeline. Isn't this exciting? You and Cecil fighting a duel over little old me. Uh, yes. Yeah. Throckmorton. Yes. I'm going to miss you. I hope Cecil does. <laughs> well, Commish, this is it. <laughs> Gentlemen, take your places. Back to back. Pistols in the air. Zeef. Cecil, can't we talk this thing over? Start pacing. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, five, little six, family. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Fire. Bang! Yeah. You got me. Throckmorton, speak to me. Throckmorton. Now, Throckmorton, wake up. Throckmorton. What's that? I'm shocked. I'm a boogle. Shame on you, sleeping at your desk like this. Huh? Oh, then there wasn't any duel. Duel? What are you talking about, Throckmorton? I just had to come up to your office to tell you something. What's that? I just got another letter from Cecil, and do you know what to think? He isn't jealous of you anymore. He isn't? He met some giggling little thing at the cotillion and fell head over heels in love. He did? Yes, he did, and I'll never speak to that cat again. Well, <laughs> he sounds pretty worthless, all right. Mr. Gildersleeve, I won't have you speaking about Cecil that way. Huh? Remember, he's a southern gentleman. Pardon me, folks, this is where I came in. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Homemakers, for Lenten meals, for economy meals any day of the week, get Kraft's nutritious, smooth-melting cheese food, Velveeta. Spread or slice Velveeta's golden goodness thick for lunchtime sandwiches. Melt Velveeta for a smooth sauce that swell on seafood or eggs and on leftover meat such as ham or chicken or veal. Those good-eating Velveeta main dishes help supply high-quality, complete protein and other precious milk nutrients. And they're money savers. So for sandwiches and for cooking, get Velveeta in the two-pound loaf. A big help with Lenten meals. A big help with a budget, too. Dear Diary, I have just one thing to say tonight. I've learned my lesson this time. Adeline and I are through. Absolutely through. Believe me, dear Diary, I'll never... Help me, telephone! Oh, who's it from, Bertie? Miss Adeline Fairchild. Oh? Well, maybe I'll give her one more chance. <laughs> Good night, dear diary. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Edward G. Robinson will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The next time you have to fix a hurry-up lunch, open a package of Kraft Dinner, and in a twinkling, you can have a piping hot dish of macaroni and cheese. Each package of Kraft Dinner contains special macaroni that cooks fluffy, light, and tender in just seven minutes, and golden Kraft grated that you stir in for a grand cheddar cheese flavor. Two magic ingredients for making delicious macaroni and cheese at a cost of only a few cents more than a package of macaroni alone. For a quick, easy, economical main dish, get Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.